Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Microbiology with Sumi. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Today we will be learning stain and staining procedures. So, let's start with it. Introduction Microorganisms are microscopic in nature. As we all know, we can't observe microorganism through our naked eyes. We require a microscope for its observation. As well as microorganisms are colorless with low refractive index. And these microorganisms are suspended in aqueous media. And the refractive index of microorganisms as well as aqueous media in which they are suspended are very low or is very same and very low so the observation becomes difficult due to lack of contrast observation of unstained microbes is difficult so staining of this microorganism is an essential step in microbiological studies see if we want to observe and study microorganism it is important to stain this microorganisms and for the staining of microorganisms there are various procedures means for staining different parts of microbes there are different procedures there are different steps that are carried out further what is the purpose of staining of these microorganisms purpose of staining is to create a contrast between microorganisms and aqueous media as I mentioned before, the refractive index of microorganisms and aqueous media in which they are suspended is the same and very low. So, the contrast is not created and it is very important to create a contrast between these both things. Now, it helps in studying the morphological character. Right? If the microorganism gets stained then only we will be able to study its morphological characters further it helps in studying internal as well as external characters of microorganisms staining makes microorganisms visible so the main thing is we stain microorganisms that is in simple words we color microorganism with different stains and hence we can observe it under microscope so let's see the difference between dye and stain. Generally there are two types of staining agents. First one is dye and the second is stain. So let's see what is the difference between them. First one is dye. Dye is an organic compound made up of oxochrome and chromophore group. These groups are linked to a benzene ring. So these both groups are linked to a benzene ring. Further, dye is used for coloring non-biological objects. This is an important thing. Further, stain. Stain is an organic compound containing both oxochrome and chromophore group. Here, oxo here oxochrome and chromophore group are not linked to a benzene ring. The next one is stains are basically used for coloring biological agent this is the important differentiation between them dye is used for coloring non-biological agents that is non-living things and stain is used for coloring biological agents let's study stain in detail stain are basically used for coloring biological agents chromophore group is a charged molecule these molecules get bind to charged cellular compounds like proteins and nucleic acid now a stain contains chromophore and oxochrome group and the chromophore group is a charged molecule whereas the cellular components present in a cell like proteins nucleic acids they also contain a charge when these both charges come together they get bind to each other further some stains have high affinity towards cellular components as well as some stains have very low affinity or no affinity towards the cellular components. So, such stains having low affinity or no affinity are called as a mordant. So, the mordant is a stain 
which has low affinity towards the cellular components that is it doesn't bind or we can say it doesn't stains the cellular components now mordant is a substance that increases affinity of a stain and molecule to be stained now what is the role of a mordant mordant just increases the binding or the affinity of a stain and a cellular molecule that we are going to stain now types of stains generally there are three types of stains acidic stain basic stain and neutral stain acidic stain acidic stains are those which after dissociation or ionization impart a negative charge on chromophore group now when a dissociation and ionization takes place in acidic stain the chromophore group imparts negative charge and hence it is called as acidic change in simple words acidic stain the chromophore group present in acidic stain contains negative charge the examples are eosin and congo red now basic stain basic stain are those stain which after dissociation or ionization imparts positive charge on chromophore group now in simple words we can say basic stain the chromophore group present in basic stain contains a positive charge the examples are methylene blue and neutral stain neutral stain are those stains which after dissociation or ionization imparts both positive and negative charge on chromophore group so the chromophore group present in neutral stain after dissociation or ionization contains both charges that is positive as well as negative thank you for watching my video if you like my video please like share and subscribe to my channel